Hello everybody, my name is Chase Paul Young, and I will be delivering my team's Co-Space Rescue 2020 Under 12 Finals presentation. Our names are Chase Paul Young and Isaac Chung. We study in the Gifted Education Program at Nanyang Primary School. We have had in-depth exposure with Co-Space Rescue having participated before and making it to the finals. We have a good knowledge and strong experience with Python, JavaScript, and Scratch. Now I'll be giving you an executive summary of our preliminary challenge. This year, we participated in the Co-Space Rescue Under 12 section. The challenge was to let our robot score the most points as possible by picking up objects and find a way to deposit the objects that it picked up. We also had to ensure that our robot avoided traps and obstacles. Our main strategy was square targeting. We applied it in different scenarios and in different ways. For example, we used it in trying to find the deposit zone. We also used it to keep our robot in the special zone for a specific amount of time to collect as many points as possible. We also used other more basic strategies, including only making the robot deposit after collecting a certain amount of objects and following the wall when a super object is spawned. We ended up with a score of 1565 for our preliminary challenge. We struggled with employing our strategies and thus wasted some time. Our methods were quite good, however, and allowed us to obtain a relatively high score. I just want to say that curiosity and the ability to take risks by sacrificing time in order to make innovative solutions pays off. It's important to think of non-conventional solutions, and no matter how hard it is to pull it off, the end solutions will always be rewarding. We could have improved by developing the strategy before starting to count, therefore saving time and giving us a clearer direction. That's one of the things that I would have done if I had a chance to redo it all over again. Now, I'm going to teach you how to use square targeting. Square targeting is to contain the robot within the square. Though this sounds simple, it has many uses. In square targeting, we can divide the map into nine different squares. 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 0, 0, 2, 1, 2, and 2, 2. Um, know that this chart that I've drawn here is just approximate. It's not drawn to scale. X refers to the X axis and Y refers to the Y axis. The X coordinate always comes first. For example, X equals to 0 and Y equals 1 can be called 0, 1. Now, this is an example of how score targeting can be useful in finding the deposit term. So, here we have the square, it's 2, 2. Right, so um, normally when the robot um, senses the wall, it will bounce up in a certain angle, but we coded it to make sure that in square 2-2, two, two, the angle in which it bounces off, the wall changes. The new angle in which it bounces off will send it to the direction of the deposit zone. The robot will be able to go into the deposit zone and deposit. That's quite a neat idea, I think. Now, this is an ex another example of how square targeting can be useful, and this is to stay in the special zone. So, basically, when the robot goes into the square 2-2, two, two, it will be guided into 2-1 and then into 2-0, oh, where the special zone is to collect objects. It stays in the special zone for a while. If the loaded object is greater than 4, it can go to the deposit zone, and if the loaded object is smaller than 4, it can go back to pick up more objects, then make it down again. The cycle repeats itself. 
I think this is also quite a neat, good, and overall very smart algorithm that you can employ. It's very effective in this map. Now, I'm going to pre be presenting sort of like a simulation of what happened in our game for this map in particular. So we heavily struggled with this map, I think. Uh, the robot starts here, it was, it like wins here and then here and here, but here actually we um, created a special algorithm that I explained just now. So when it's in this square, zero, zero, it will bounce, when it touches the yellow, it will bounce up in a different direction that will allow it to go into the deposit zone. So that is how we find the deposit zone. So. And keep in mind that this special um, square targeting algorithm only occurs when there's four or more objects uh, in the robot's back. Um, another very um, uh, good idea that we had was to make it momentarily in the game go into this um, white zone here. The, the square here is actually 1-1, one, one. so it collects objects here for a while. We create a variable that um, counts the amount of time it's here, and then after that it leaves, collects more objects, and like, just collects more objects until it's ready to go into the deposit. So this was a very effective idea. Now how can we apply the knowledge to gain from this game into the real world? And I think that's very important, because at the end of the day, we're not coding in order to get a fake robot in the digital world in order to collect some objects and feel very happy about ourselves when we, got a, when we get a high score. The main aim of all these technology is to improve human life. So how can we apply the knowledge gained from this game into the real world? Now I'm going to share with you a little story. Um, so I was reading about how this snake, developed by the Car University of Carnegie Mellon, was used in a Mexican earthquake to help find survivors. So basically it went into all those like um, underground piles of rocks and all, and all the debris to find, for, to find and look for any human survivors. Um, I think that's quite cool. Uh, but how can we apply the knowledge gained in this um, Robocop co space rescue into this uh, real life scenario? Well, the um, algorithms that we have learned can help for the collection of evidence to help find the survivors. Think of the evidence like the objects that we're collecting in the game. And it can also help the uh, snake to detect survivors using all the ultrasonic sensors and stuff like that. Um, think the objects, and it can also locate the starting and the ending point of its mission. Uh, and it can break up the space needed to be searched into different parts, like square targeting, and focus on certain parts to achieve its goals, and it can also use variables to help it be more advanced. So I think actually um, all these robotics and all are all in the end to be used to help improve the world and to help save lives and all. And I think the stuff that we have learned from the Co-Space Rescue can really be applied into real world scenarios. And I hope I um, tell you how to apply these knowledge into to the real world. So um, I'd just like to say thank you for listening to our presentation and have a great day.